What's up everybody, this is DJ Buster B. My YouTube channel is mainly for DJ gear, DJ gig logs, but in the past few years I started exposing some of my personal hobbies, which is like RC planes, helicopters, and FPV, first person view, that kind of deal. I've been in an RC plane since I was maybe 1981, 82. I've always had airplanes in my hand, stuff like that. But this video right here is mainly about how did I get into astronomy and astrophotography? I'm getting this question a lot through personal messages, through uh, YouTube and Instagram, things like that. So I finally figured, I said, look, instead of me writing everybody back, let me just post a video. But astronomy has always been a hobby that I've had since I was a real, I mean, real little, since when I started with airplanes and everything, like 81, 82. I've always been looking at the night sky, stars, um, the moon and things like that. I've always been very interested in that kind of stuff. No one really knows about it. It's only my immediate family and some real close friends that know that I've always had telescopes and things like it that. It all basically started back when um, my dad always he had like a telescope way back then. I don't know what it was. It had a wooden tripod. And I, I still remember the color it was like a dark charcoal gray with black dew shield on the front and a black eyepiece. It was always dusty because, you know, we'd never really cover that kind of deal. But he used to always bring the thing out in the front yard when it was a full moon. And I was real little, maybe, I guess, seven, so what, six, five years old, five, six, seven years old like that. So I've always tried to look at the moon and stuff like that. He's always tried to capture it with his camera, like take pictures of it and things like that. So later on, I'm not sure what happened to the telescope. But later on, I always said I want a telescope. So right around, I think, 80, it was 1985 going to 86 when Halley's Comet was visible around the world and i begged for a telescope for christmas so bad i mean i used to use binoculars my mom's binoculars and things like that to try to look at the sky but i begged so much for a telescope i finally got one but this is like a little cheap i mean cheap like you buy the toy store it was a, i can still remember it it's still in my mother's house now in the closet it's still over there i need to bring it out one day and just test it out what it's called edu science like edu science something like that if you google it you see like vintage telescopes it's all white plastic black little do shield, some cheap little eye pieces. But when I got that thing, I will put a video of it in this video. I mean, a picture of it in this video. But when I first got it for Christmas and I, I was in the front yard, I had my sister take a picture of me with it. I was like, I got a telescope. I would look at the moon every night the moon was out and stars and things like that. It, the power of that thing might've been like 50X. I don't know, it was so low power, but it was my first telescope. I remember I wore out the little, um, the piece where the telescope connects to the tripod, it was all plastic. It wore out, so I had to put like screws and nuts and washes like that to make it work. So later on, um, I had a telescope all through junior high and high school. And I always said, when I get me a job, I'm gonna buy me a big telescope. So it wasn't until maybe, I think 95, 96, I got me a big reflecting telescope. Well, it was big to me. It was Polaris by Mead. Uh, I sold it to my cousin like 15 years ago, but I'm gonna put a picture of that telescope in this video too. I don't have the original picture of me with it, but they still have pictures of it online. But that was the telescope. I didn't know anything about equatorial mount, balancing. It had a I paid like $400 for that thing back then. I remember when I went to this big department store and it was at the top of the shelf. I was like, I'm getting that. I'm getting that telescope. So the first couple of paychecks came through and I was like, I'm getting a telescope. So I bought it. And that when I got that scope, it was a comment out by that time by the name of um, Hale Bach. So that was like 95, 96, right around there. But, um, Anyway, I got a telescope, trying to balance and everything. It was so heavy. That thing was so heavy because it was all metal. And I would get off work around 11 o'clock and I would sit in my mom's front yard and just move wherever I could just move that scope to and just look. And it had big slow motion controls. You can turn like from azimuth and um, out and stuff like that. It slow motion controls on it. So I would just look at anything through the finder scope and just try to look at, well, what is that through the finder? Try to find it in the scope and look. That was the first scope that I ever in my life saw Orion Nebula. I remember seeing Orion Belt, the three stars, because I knew what Orion was. And I was like, what's that haze at the bottom? So I looked through the finder scope, saw the haze. I was like, is that a cluster? I don't know. I didn't know what it was. Point of the scope, I was blown away seeing like the haze, the cloud and everything. You can't see all the colors like you see with astrophotography, but you can see the colors. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's the nebula. I was out there like shocked. So then later on, uh, when the season came around for like Saturn and Jupiter, I was like, what's that bright star? I kept thinking it was a star. I didn't have a star chart or anything back then. Pointed at it, first thing I saw was Saturn and the rings and like three little dots for the moon. That blew me away too. And I was like, man, I gotta get pictures of this stuff. This was back in the 90s though. First thing when I saw Jupiter was the same way. You see the color bands and everything. 
I mean, granted, the scope was, I can't remember the power, but it was, it's like a 900 millimeter or something like that. Anyway, um, it wasn't until uh, maybe five years ago, I sold that scope. About five years ago, I got me my first computerized scope. It was a Celesteron SLT. Oh man, I can't remember. I sold it on Craigslist. The guy drove like a whole state away to pick it up. That was a scope where I could finally start pinpointing things in the sky. As far as once you set up, do your star alignment, the scope was slew to a certain object and you could find things. When I got that scope, I was like, I'm trying to take pictures of stuff now. I want to see what, I want to snap pictures of what's out there. I would try to rig my cell phone up. I had an Android cell phone. Bought this big mount that you clamp onto the telescope and the cell phone would look into the eyepiece and it was all shaky and blurry. You couldn't see anything. I had like three eyepieces, like a, uh, I think it was like 25 millimeter. It was like a 15 millimeter and like a 10 millimeter or something like that. But um, it also, also um, take it back a little bit. When I had that first big Polaris by me refractor, a reflecting telescope, I got my first solar filter back then too. And actually I did a little illegal. I made it out of a, um, <laughs> It was uh, one of the welding masks. You had like the big screen, the filter in the front to block out the bright light. I rigged up this I, this big plastic piece on the front, cut a slot for that. And that's when I first saw my first time I've ever seen sunspots. And of course, I didn't look at it long because I was scared it might damage my eye, but everything was filtered. I mean, you could see the sun perfect white and everything like that. Now, fast forward back. Now, when I first started trying to take pictures, nothing was coming out clear. I was like, man, how can I get into some astral photography? I want to get, I was Googling images and seeing what people were doing. I was like, man, I got to get into this. So I joined uh, Cloudy Nights, the uh, forum that a lot of people out there on, into um, astral photography are into. Cloudy Nights, I started looking around and reading on it. I was totally lost. I didn't know a thing. I didn't know any of these terms these guys were talking about. A lot of people in there were speaking so scientific and using these all kind of terms that I didn't know what they were talking about with these mounts and everything and guiding and guide scopes, arc seconds, uh, knowing how to pull a line and drip the line. I was like, what is this? What is this? What am I getting into? So I sold that scope and I bought um, bought the Celestron 8SC. And of course right now it's decked up, has a guide scope. Uh, this is the 8SC, you can see right here. Celestron 8SC. I bought this, it came with the mount and everything. And that's when I really started getting to, into deep space because this scope has an eight inch aperture and has a lot of light gathering and everything like that. So I spent a few months with this scope and then trying to hook up a DSLR to it. I had to buy adapters and all kinds of things. And, and of course it was too heavy for the mount. So it wasn't tracking or anything, but uh, that's when I really started doing a lot of research and reading and trying to educate myself because no one that I knew was into this stuff. I didn't have any help. I didn't know anything that I was getting into, so I, was, I spent so many days just reading and reading like in between time at work and things like that, and reading and reading, trying to figure out this kind of stuff. So it wasn't until um, I ran into, I was Googling around, searching, came across Chuck's astrophotography. So this guy, he had an 8SC also, and he was trying to do photography and everything. I started watching a couple of his videos, and that's when I first, I was like, man, let me try to do what he's doing. That's when I bought this Orion short tube, 80 millimeter um, guide scope. I started, I was spending money, and a lot of stuff I was buying I didn't need. I was wasting money because I didn't know, so I had to turn around and sell the stuff on cloudy nights and things. Like, I was buying it used on cloudy nights, so I had to sell it back on cloudy nights. Long story story, I'm not gonna keep going on to all the steps that I did, but um, that's how I got into actual photography. I wanted to take pictures of what I saw out there, and then some of the stuff I wanted to see different colors of that your naked eye really can't see. From seeing these other images on Google and everything, that's how I got into, I was like, look, I gotta get, I wanna start taking these pictures and printing them out because deep space, I've always been to the galaxies and what's out there, that kind of thing. So later on, I finally got um, this um, Skywatcher back here. And that was about a little over a year and a half ago. I got the Skywatcher and got this little 50 millimeter guide scope. Wasn't until I tried with my Nikon, my Canon, those DSLRs, my pictures were starting to get okay, but it wasn't the best. And so actually, when I got the um, ZWO back here, the ASI, the Mono, cool camera bike here. Of course, I had to get the filter wheel and all these adapters and still was a learning process. Still, my pictures weren't looking good until you got to keep practicing and practicing. I had so many nights of failures and failures. Like you set everything up, you start taking images and you think you're getting good data and then come to find out guiding, you got star trails and it was just so many failures that I was like, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna go back to just imaging through the scope, through my ASC and just visually looking at targets. But then, Every time I got ready to quit, 
I will see Chuck's actual photography post another video. So usually he was always posting videos on the same targets that I was trying to get. So that sort of motivated me to stay into it and keep reading and reading. And then I would shoot him questions and he would always shoot an answer back. And he made things so simple on what he was doing to be successful into it. I mean, because everything else I was reading was like totally blowing my mind. I was like, man, these, these people are saying, you can't use this, you can't use this with that. That's not gonna work if you don't do this. And I was like, hold on, it's not, it can't be that hard. So Chuck would post videos of his setup, his settings, and I'm like, man, then everything started working. So now my main challenge is I need to get better with my image processing with Pixing Site, because that software is like, it's almost like you need a, a PhD to learn how to do everything in that software. It's like a advanced Photoshop or something like that. That's my main challenge now is Pixing Site. And um, I've gotten pretty good at my guiding. I know this AVX mount back here is not the best to be guiding on, but it's a beginner mount. It still worked for me. And one day I need to upgrade from this doublet to a, a triplet. From, you know, a lot of people say you need a triplet to get the lenses, uh, the glass is a lot better than a triplet. You get better images and better results. So that and a better mount. Because this ADSC is, I mean, this uh, AVX is not the best, but if you can, if any of you guys trying to pull a line, I'm telling you, the um, Pole Master camera right here, before that I was trying to look through this tube and you got to look up at Polaris and North Star and try to turn them out and all this kind of stuff and drift. Once I got this camera, I can pull the line in like two minutes, three minutes or so. Once I pull the line, bam, I'm already start slewing to the target, start imaging, go back in the house. I tell you, it's still a learning process, it never ends, but that's my story of how I got into astrophotography. It all started with my dad having a telescope and he used to look at the moon and that sparked my interest. It, also, my mom, she was a teacher, so she was always talking science stuff. She always had TV on National Geographic and things like that. This is before Discovery Channel. So I was always looking at that. You see the planets and space and stuff. So that it always kept my interest going. And a lot of people like will always say like, man, Henry, how'd you get to all this? You know, most people like you aren't even you know, to sports or something. They're not into the science, space, radar control airplanes and things like that. And I'm sort of a little different, I guess you could say. But it's cool though. So. So I got a lot of hobbies. I mean, between astrophotography, astronomy, all tied together, and model airplanes, and DJing, working out, just a lot of hobbies. Anyway, I stayed busy, but that's my story on how I got into astrophotography. Didn't mean to make this video so long. Hope this answers some questions that people always ask how to get into it. And I'm still gonna start posting videos on, you know, what I'm capturing, things like that. It's just been a while. We've had a lot of cloudy nights, bad weather, rain, so I had like, four or five targets I just completed, but only two of them I did videos for, the rest of them I didn't. I just went and set up, go to bed, hopefully everything runs successfully. But that's my video, all right. Thanks for listening to everything, all right. Oh, before the video, uh, let me show you some of, of course, the stuff. Of this is my Skywatcher 80, 80 millimeter refractor right here. It's just a doublet, it's not a triplet. Uh, Finder scope uh, is my generic 50 millimeter guide scope with my Lobestar X2 guide camera. This made a big difference with guiding. Um, before I was using different kind of cameras, I couldn't stay locked onto a star because I'm in a heavily light polluted area over in where I'm at right now. And the autofocuser, man, this made my images a lot better with my stars because before that, my rack and pinion focuser would keep slipping. And anytime the temperature dropped to like 32 or lower outside, it would start slipping late at night. So that made my stars be a long, you know, my stars were like elongated, egg shaped, stuff like that. They weren't round. And so I got this autofocus. There's a lot of stuff you gotta hook up, you know, as far as the controller and the software and everything like that. But the, everyone knows about the ZWO, the mono camera right here that shoots mono and it's cooled. You gotta have a cooled camera to cool your sensor down. That makes a big difference with noise. And my filter wheel back here that switched between all my different um, narrow band and broadband filters. And that's about it. Um, I got another video that shows my setup, my wire management. Right now everything's just hanging because it's not connected. When I store my scope, I unplug all this stuff because just for fear that if you got everything plugged in, if something bumps, you could break one of the USB jacks and you don't really want to do all that. I mean, leaves a lot of bad things. So just I unplug all this stuff and just let it hang until I'm ready to go outside and set it all up. But everything else over here stays here. heater strips right here. Keep all the dew down and the moisture. Pole master on the front right here, and do heater controllers, and all my power supplies. Try to keep everything neat. And here's my ADSC right here. I haven't been using my ADSC a lot. I use it for Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, and the Moon. 
but I haven't used it a lot. It's still sitting here. Uh, still gonna use it. Also change out to this camera is a color camera. This is the ASI one two two. I mean ASI two two four MC. Non cooled camera, but it does great. Also had to get the um, fo this is a focal extender right here, it's like a Bolo, and this made a good difference because better focal extender what I had. And this is ZWO atmospheric dissipation corrector. If I said it correctly, this thing took a while to learn how to use. So you got to level everything and move your little these little levers right here to it's dealing with the color and things like that with the atmosphere. Also, I put a wash around my my focus right here so I could turn slowly like this instead of moving big movements. Just something I saw on YouTube. But that's basically for the 8SC. I thought about getting rid of the scope, but it's got a lot of focal uh, focal power on it. This is my dew heater right here. And dew heater strip right here on the guide scope. Just hanging around. And that's why I didn't have a Telrad finder right here. It's good scope though. It's good on the planets. But I haven't used it this season yet for um, astrophotography. I just used it for all the planets when Mars was at its closest and Jupiter and Saturn. That's about it.